On behalf of Yeshiva University and the graduates of our studies, I welcome everyone here today. I welcome President Joel, the presence of President Joel, Russia Yeshiva, distinguished rabbis, family, judge first, children of, of the, the left, colleagues, students, and generally speaking, all admirers of Rabbi Bleck. faculty members can boast the following. A close Talmud of the great Rabbi Yosef Dolzal of Ancient, author of more than a dozen books, a teacher who continues to inspire thousands of Talmudim for more than 47 years, world-renowned speaker and lecturer, person who has meetings with the Pope, and of course, a guest in the Oprah Room for Ishva. We're here today to celebrate the great achievements of a treasured member of our faculty and community, Rabbi Benjamin Bleff, Associate Professor of Talmud. When considering my opening remarks, I decided to gain insight, as I'm sure many of us do, from one of Rabbi Bleff's books, to try to think about what I could say. I looked into the book, Your Name is Your Blessing, co-authored uh, with Mrs. Black, and I looked under the entry, Benjamin. It says as follows, the Hebrew for, for Benjamin is Binyamin, which means son of my right hand. The gematria is 162. The gematria corresponds to the Hebrew word B'Tselem in his image. His phrase is chen v'chavod me Hashem, charm and glory from God, and his blessing, possessed of an extra measure of charm and charisma, he will be perceived in the image of God. I believe these words capture some of the many unique qualities of Rabbi Blaine. It is now my distinct pleasure to introduce the President of Yeshiva University, President Richard Joel, to reflect upon his unique relationship with the Bleff family. Rishos, Arash Yeshiva, distinguished faculty, um, uh, the Bleff family, everybody here, um, honored students, um, Rabbi Kalinsky, never, never, do my gematrias. <laughs> How can you talk about this man without doing a gematria and you took my gematria? It's a terrible. So I'm done. In closing, um, you know, so this is a very personal thing for me. Um, and let me, let me explain why. I mean, the, the funny way why is that I know that Rabbi Lech has written numerous books specifically for me and named them in my honor, the complete idiot sky. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm working hard at it, but, uh, but I appreciate your, your personal dedication to me. Ella told us Yitzchak and Avram, Avram Holid is Yitzchak. Um, these are the generations of Yitzchak, Avram Holid as Yitzchak. So of course the question is, what's the tautology here? Um, these are the generations of Yitzchak ben Avram. We know that Avram is, is, is the father. Why does it say Avram hold it as Yitzchak? So many different answers. Um, but one stands out uh, for me, with Fianna Yastaiti, um, which is to say that don't think for a minute that Yitzchak was not the son of Avram. And I don't mean genealogically, I mean spiritually. That don't think for a minute that who Yitzchak was, was not shaped by his being Avraham's son, and that what Avraham did, in addition to giving birth to him, was he was, he was the father in every way that we, that we think of Avi Mori, uh, of us. So the truth is there's no better definition of the mission that Rabbi Benjamin Blech um, gave himself uh, together with his best friend and partner of a lifetime, Elaine. Um, his goal was to say, how do I share who I am 
so that others can be who they can be. And it's been that simple. It's that simple in the pulpit. It's that simple in the books. But more than that, it's that simple in the family. Um, but, uh, but even more, it's that simple at Yeshiva University. Um, now, I used to do a really fine uh, Rabbi Blech impression. <laughs> um, I thought it was inappropriate for me to do it today. <laughs> Eighty years! <laughs> Who would believe I will share with you the single most unbelievable insight that I've had since the single most unbelievable insight that I had yesterday? <laughs> But let me, let me do some of the, uh, to be able to be a father and an active parent, to guide children, to teach, requires compassion and requires a natural ability of teacher. Uh, Rabbi Blech, aside from as husband and father, uh, there is no, there's nothing that, 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 that comes from every pore of your body more than teacher. And um, I don't accept uh, your age, it can't be. It can't be. It's a, if you're 127, I would talk about Sarah, like, like she was at the 100, she was at 20, she was at 7. Um, uh, but I will say that you're, that you're timeless, you're ageless, uh, you've counted yourself out um, far more times than the Rabbana Shalom is prepared to count you out. And I think what we do today is celebrate the first two-thirds of your life. And, um, uh, and it's a great celebration for us. Um, you know that Rabbi Blatt is a master teacher. I'll give you my insights, um, such as they are, and having been a student of Rabbi Blech for uh, over 30 years, um, uh, both in formal ways and in informal ways. Um, uh, both learning what to do and telling him what he shouldn't do. Um, <laughs> but he never listened, so it didn't matter. He always came out on top anyway, so it was wonderful. Rabbi Benjamin Blech has the capacity to both speak to your heart and to your mind, and to be able to convey a philosophy of Yiddishkeit that we define as Torah Umada, but in so many ways is just truly Blechian. The, 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 uh, you know, he's been at JSS since it was JSB, um, 47 years of teaching here, um, and how many people have live committed Torah lives now? Uh, because of the relationship with him, but I would say even more than the relationship with him, his teachings have a simple profundity that you can't run away from. In other words, anybody can be an influence, and in hopefully we're all try to be influences, and that really influences young people to say, like that person is, I want to be. But the truth of the matter is that the majesty of an idea and the majesty of Torah is inescapable once it enters the mind and the heart. But there are all kinds of barriers to it entering the minds and the heart. And Rabbi Blech is a, is a barrier breaker that way. He, you all know this. He has the capacity, both in his writing and in his teaching, to speak with such clarity and insight that people of, on different mandrigot, people on different levels, people with different backgrounds, get to take profound lessons from him on their levels. On their levels. You can't say, here's a beginning class. Read the complete idiot's guide to understanding Judaism. Don't even read the book, Understanding Judaism. Read the complete idiot's guide, which is written for someone, and I've given it out countless times to people who know to join the faculty who aren't Jewish, or things like that, to get an insight into Yiddishkeit. Right? And you can't read that as someone who even knows something without saying, wow, look what I get from this. Look what I learned from this. Now, full disclosure, I was Rabbi Blatt's youth director for 11 years. He is responsible for me going into, uh, into the career of Avodah Sakodesh, and let's make sure Chodesh um, uh, we have time for you to ask Mechila of me for influencing me in that way. <laughs> and uh, that you also have time to ask Mechila of all of them who have been subject to the consequences of your influence. Um, so I, I met Rabbi Blech, uh, I think in 1975 at Camp Marasha, where he was the camp rabbi. Any of you remember Rabbi Blech as camp rabbi? And remember Tisha B'Av, Tav, Shit. Sorry, I think you um, 
But, but in the course of that time at Camp Arasha, Rabbi Blatt came over to me, uh, and he made the mistake of thinking I was good with young people. I was a, I just passed the bar, and I was starting my career as an assistant district attorney. And in talking, uh, he knew that we were living in an apartment in Forest Hills that we were looking for uh, to see to go out to suburbia and buy a home. And he came over to me and said that they were looking for a youth director for his shul at Young Israel of Oceanside. And uh, he told me what a wonderful opportunity it was, and I'd be working with him, and there are youth to influence, and he's hoping that more young people would move into the community. And I said, thank you, I will never, will he never work for the Jewish people. <laughs> Remember that? And then he said to me very nicely, I think I'm quoting exactly, he says, jerk, they throw in a house. Is <laughs> <laughs> that your pardon? <laughs> He said, in addition to the work, they'll give you a part-time job, and there's a home right next to the shul that we used to live in that you'll get rent-free. If you want to see if you like suburban living, here's a, an easy way to do it. You'll be able to help feed Esther, um, and, um, and we can work very well together. And uh, you'll see, and maybe if you really like suburban living, you'll find someplace else to live. Um, I, uh, I went for an interview, I'm sure through his intervention, uh, I, received, uh, I received the job. We were warmly welcomed by our neighbors two doors down, Elaine and uh, Rabbi Benjamin Blech, and they're extraordinary children, extraordinary children. That's all of them, by the way. I didn't mean just one of them was extraordinary. They're all extraordinary. Um, Tamar and uh, Jordana and, 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 and Ari and uh, what's her name? <laughs> and Yael. Um, really wonderful, and they really took us into, into, into their home and into their lives, and we developed an extraordinary relationship. But going to shul and listening to shirim, and listening to sermons, and listening to all night learnings on shuls from Rabbi Blatt was just an incomparable experience that any of you who've been in his class understand. And understand that the way he relates to you primarily is not to say, oh, what are your deepest concerns about life? It's to say, I'm opening up to you and a world of values, and opening up to you a world of values in ways that can't be comprehended in any other way. I was, I think, the longest serving youth director in history. I worked uh, there for 11 years. Uh, during those 11 years, uh, there was a tremendous influx of young people as people were looking for communities to move into, and Rabbi Black's power attracted so many people, including most of our friends, and, and, and therefore many people who work at Yeshiva University now. Um, and, um, and I have to say, it was just an extraordinary time. It was a time of growth and celebration. We built Mikvalot and Chavra Kaddishas and, uh, and Eruvim and, uh, and learning and loving, and it was really wonderful. Um, I, I finally left being youth director, because as youth director, I had to report to the board of the shul and the president of sisterhood, and my wife was the president of sisterhood, and I was on the board of the shul, so there was nothing else to do. But, but it was almost like a Camelot period. There was just splendor there, and it was defined not by gematria, but by Torah and commitment and example and, and love. And on behalf of Yeshiva University, I have to say, I know people who were my contemporaries, sorry, my contemporaries who had you as a teacher, who are from today and are contributing to the world in immense ways, and will talk to me about what it was that you taught them and that you continue to teach. So on behalf of all of us at Yeshiva University, thank you for the first 47 years. Thank you for your enlightening the world. Um, uh, thank you for going to the same Pesach program that I'm going to this year, so I'll be able to, to, to learn from you some more. Uh, uh, this is a community that's busy running around, and we don't often enough take time to even know each other, much less appreciate each other. Everybody here, and, and hundreds more, um, just want me to serve as a spokesman to say to you, God bless you, and give you health, and stay close to us, and enjoy your extraordinary wife and your wonderful family, uh, May of Esther. Awesome. Thank you.
that's on the base says that a person who teaches his fellow's son Torah, it's as if he bore him himself. And this is the epitome of my relationship with my Rebbe, Rabbi Benjamin Bloch. My formal Jewish education began approximately 50 years ago uh, in the Talmud Torah of the young Israel of Oceanside. The first day of class, the principal of the Talmud Torah, Rabbi Bloch, came into our class to teach us Aleph and Beis. So my education began with Rabbi Bleth teaching the Aleph base. A number of years went by, and it was time for a bar mitzvah. My bar mitzvah teacher was Rabbi Bleth. Um, time went on, I became more and more interested in higher Jewish education. Uh, Rabbi Bleth came to me and said, um, I've arranged through the shul, that uh, we're going to have a scholarship program and we want you to go to the um, Torah Leadership Seminar sponsored by Yeshiva University. So I went to the Torah Leadership Seminar thanks to Rabbi Bleth and his efforts and uh, I came back from that and decided that I wanted to continue my Torah education at Yeshiva University. Um, I came to Yeshiva University as an undergraduate and I was privileged to have Rabbi Bleth as my teacher for Chumash, for Hashkafa, for Gemara. Um, I still t t tell people to this day, um, this was over 30 years ago, thank God I've learned a few more Gemaras since the second paragraph of Kedushin that we learned that year, but I still feel that I know that Gemara better than any other Gemara that I've ever learned. Um, the, uh, the rabbi was uh, my side of the at my wedding. Uh, he read the Kriyas of Shame and my son's bris. So we have a long-standing relationship. Um, and as the Gemara says, it's as if he's my own father. Um, and I speak, I think, for thousands of our other Talmudim um, who feel the same way. Um, it's been an honor and a privilege to be asked to just share a few memories of my life my spiritual life, my educational life, and my personal life um, spent with Rabbi and Mrs. Blech. Um, and I thank you for everything, and uh, I thank you for the ability for me to stand here today.
The next speaker is the University Pre Professor at Yeshiva University, also a longtime friend, colleague of Rabbi Blech, Rabbi Jacob Schechter. Rabbi Black, members of the family, President Joel, Rashi Yeshiva, members of the administration, members of the faculty, uh, <coughs> I'm very uh, touched and humbled by this opportunity to share a few words in honor of our guest of honor today. And I think that the reason why I was Zoha is because I'm probably one of the very few who can actually say that I was Rabbi Black's rabbi. Uh, it's hard to be the rabbi of the rabbi, uh, the Heya Yedia. Uh, but the Blacks, uh, the rabbi Elaine came to the West Side a number of years ago, uh, moved into our neighborhood, and I was the rabbi of the Jewish Center. And I very much uh, welcomed this extraordinary gift and uh, went out of my way to uh, express the uh, tremendous feelings of admiration that I had the rabbi left, I gave him my uh, Aser Sadibros Aliyah, I gave him my Shira Aliyah, I invited him to walk in front of me when we walked around the shul uh, for Hishanis. Uh I recognized uh, uh, who we had and uh, was very honored. And I also welcome members of the Jewish Center who are here in your honor who have come. You know, we say, uh, 37 years in a shul and 47 years in our institution. Uh, your uh, BA is from here, your smicha is from here. So that translates into uh, many, many thousands of people. And uh, what we see here today is a tiny representation of the many thousands of people that you have touched in the course of your extraordinary career. And it's wonderful that we have a chance to reflect on it for a few moments and to publicly give you the recognition that you deserve, and even more so than a current hope, that you deserve on behalf of so many people who you have changed in so many different ways, Torah Shabbat Shabbat and Torah Shabbat Peh. The words are simple, but they stand for so much. A rabbi, teacher, an author, an educator, a lecturer, a communal leader, over 12 books translates into a half a million copies. That's a lot of that's a lot of books. That's a lot of people who are reading what you have to say. Scholar and residents in hundreds of shuls. That's hundreds of thousands of people who hear what you have to say. And the videos and the tapes, ads and ads and ads. And Baruch Hashem, it's an incredible birthday. I'm a spalo all the time from Binyam and Ben Gittel. And uh, many of us are, and what a bracha. What a bracha that you have reached this stage. And uh, it's extraordinary. I want to do what you would do on such an occasion, and that is to go to the parsha and find something that directly speaks to, to you and to your accomplishment. And there's a very small, tiny, little what appears to be a minor detail that I want to reflect upon in your honor. Yitzchak tells Asaph to bring food, and Rivka overhears and dresses up Yaakov, and Yaakov comes in with the food. Wow, it was just a few minutes ago that I sent you on your mission, and now all of a sudden you came back. How were you able to do this so quickly? Because the Rabbana Shalom helped me. At which point, so Rashi wonders what prompted Yitzchak all of a sudden to be choshesh and to suspect that maybe the young man standing in front of him is not Esau. <coughs> Something happened that he became suspicious and said, Are you taka 
Esav. So Rashi explains that Amar Yitzchak Belibo Ein Derech Esav Bi Yoshem Shomayim Shalom Mefeir. Vezeh Amar Ki Yikra Shem Olakecha Lufana. Something obviously went wrong with the uh, carefully conceived and deliberately executed plan. Because he mentioned God's name. And Yitzchak knew that this Esau doesn't talk this way. Something is a little bit strange. I have to check this out. My father Zechorin Levracha asked, did Yaakov also know that ain't there a Esau Leo Shem Shemayim Shavu Befit? Yaakov knew who his brother was. Why mention God's name? and potentially jeopardize the entire mission that he and his mother so carefully constructed in order to be able to get the brachas. He also knew, and there are the of the Hashem Shemayim Shalom Befev. He could have lost the whole thing after all the effort. He knew what Yitzchak knew. He knew that potentially it might be lost. And my father suggested something that Rav Benny, Rabbi Blech, to me, really encapsulates the core of who you are and why you're such an important role model for so many of us, your Talmudim and your colleagues. Uh, why your life is such an extraordinary life? Because Yaakov Avinu taught us the following. We want the brachas of the world around us. And we're entitled to the brachas of the world around us. We want the equal chalik in the And sometimes we have to act in ways that sometimes we dress up in ways, and we want to be part of that, and, and it's okay. We want to live a comfortable life, and we're entitled to live a comfortable life. But there's one Tanai Kaitan Lumaisa, and the Tanai Kaitan Lumaisa is never, ever, never, ever to compromise on the Shem Hashem. And if by saying, Ki Hikra Hashem Alekecha Lefanai, I'm going to lose all the brachas, so be it. There's no way we can have the brachos without front and center Le'eneinu constantly. Ki hikra Hashem alukecha lefanei, the Rabbanu Shalom is central. And for us and for me, Rav Beni, you represent this incredible combination. To live in the world, to be effective in the world, to care about the world, to contribute to the world, to be a part of the world, and constant, shivisi Hashem l'neged v'necha, what you represent, is that these two go hand in hand. That you can make a contribution to the world at large through all the newspaper articles and Newsday and New York Times and Newsweek and all the TV appearances and going all over the world, Far East, Near East, all over the world, representing engagement with the world at the highest level and in your message at the top is And what a lot of that is. You don't have to give up one for the other. We can live both. We can live both with elegance, and with majesty, and with pride, and with dignity. And that's what you are, and that's what you represent. And what a bracha. What a bracha for us and our yeshiva. You've been so much a part of our yeshiva. You've inspired thousands and thousands. Who could say? How many people could say that they've inspired hundreds of thousands of people? Hundreds, it's, it's a hazard. Hundreds of thousands of people. And you have, and we look up to you for that. So 80 is a big, it's a big birthday. So uh, 80 is big matria. Who chacham? Who chacham? Who chacham? 80 is big matria ha tova ha gadola. You're a huge tova for us, Rabbi Blech, a huge tova for your family for your friends, for your neighbors, for our yeshiva, for Kha Yisrael. It is the gematria kol o hafav. It's not just kol of those who respect him, but o hafav. You're, you're a wonderfully warm person. You draw us to you. There's a warmth. There's a love. There's an ava. There's a personal connection. And that's why you've been so successful this already. Because it's not just giving over information, it's creating relationships. It is the gematria like coal. Your influence is all over the place. Who could say that? It's in the basement and fulfill that mission. I came to you two and a half years ago, Richard, and I was shaken up. 
I can say it now. I said it publicly. I had taken a physical examination. The doctor said, I need to see you and your wife together, which doesn't sound good. And I uh, we went to see him. He said, I regret to tell you that you have a fatal disease for which there is no cure. I shared that with you, JJ. And that's why you've been saying the Shabbat for me for all these years. And that was two and a half years ago. At that time, I got on the internet and I looked up the name of my disease and it says from the time of diagnosis, you usually have six months to live. And so I came crying to you. And I tried to put my affairs in order, but I had an interesting decision to make. You've all read about the bucket list. If you know that you're going to go, what do you want to do as a bucket list? I thought to myself, so what do I want to do if I really only have six months to live? Do I want to go off uh, uh, to the islands and uh, have a drink in my hand and uh, relax in the sand? What is my dream? So I began to think about what gives me the most nachas, what gives me the most fulfillment. And I said, well, teaching Torah, speaking, preaching, writing. Hey, wait a second. That's what I'm doing. That's what my life is. I gave shalach of a daughter, Kodesh Baruch and I continued doing exactly what I'm doing. And I've been going for regular checkups, and the last time I went, the doctor said, we don't understand it. We do not understand it. You haven't got worse. And where you are is where you are. Incredible. And I said, Doctor, uh, I want to tell you I'm on an ancient medication. And he said, what is that? I said, I am on a medication that's thousands of years old, invariably proved successful. Say to him, and countless people are saying to him for me. And this year's crop of students don't even know the story. Because thank God, I feel fine. I think I look fine, vital, in terms of energy. I teach the classes with the same dedication that I did when I first came in 1966. I think the real shock in the vision that God showed Moshe Rabbeinu when he first appeared to him at the snare, a vision of a snare or of a esh or snare in Ukon. I mean, why do you have to give him that vision? Is that the biggest trick you have in your arsenal, God? I mean, you could have shown so many different miracles. What is the point of showing him precisely that vision of a bush burning and it's not consumed? And I think the answer is that a Baruch who said to Moshe, listen, I want you to work for me. I want you to be my Moshe Rameh, with the teacher of the Jewish people. And I promise you this, if you will work for spirituality, for Akadah for Torah, just like the bush, you will never suffer from burnout. I do not suffer from burnout. Baruch Hashem. With all of my koach, with all of my being, I want to continue to do what I've been doing. You're going to say to me now, Richard, where's the mantra? So, if you'll allow me for the last set here. So they break it up. But I think most fascinating is about the Turin, who says, Vayiyu Chaye Sara, Vayiyu is 37. Because Sara finally, finally, finally had the fulfillment of her dream when she was 90 years old and she lived to 127. Which means Vayiyu and Zigivenza, the elect, she really was. She was fulfilled for 37 years. So I'm glad you put both numbers down, 47 and 80. 80 is my biological age, and 47 represents the number of years I've been teaching here where you are my children, Tamidim or Madim. So people ask me, you know, you don't look 80. I say, I should look 47 <laughs> because those are the number of years for my ability, for my privilege to teach you. And there is no greater blessing. These years could not have been achieved. As anyone will tell you, and for those young people who are sitting here, I want you to know, you will need a partner in life. 
you must have a partner who helps you, helps you through the tough times, and gets you to be who you can be in the good times. And Bar Hashem, I have had such a partner, and Elaine is sitting here, and I want to thank you profusely for allowing me to become what I have become. children, two of whom made Aliyah, you know, she saw, and they couldn't make a trip. But my other two, Ari and Yael, are here, and you are my blessing, and Aliyana, and Daniel, grandchildren are here, and you are my blessing, in addition to everyone else who is here. And so, I want to conclude in honor of Richard Joel. And tell you that what I have told you was the single most significant concept you will ever hear in Judaism of any rabbi, no matter where. <laughs> I almost caught, did myself as well as <laughs> I look out, and I cannot believe that the Russian Shivas are here, and you pay me this tribute. I can't put into words what that means to me. It is absolutely an honor that is beyond description. And tell me him that you have come here. <sighs> One more gematria. Laman year be a mechan. So that your days be increased. How long? How long? Did you realize? Did you realize that the gematria of Yemechan, Yud Mem Yud Chav Mem, is exactly 120? And so therefore I accept your great, wonderful wishes. And I pray that at May of Yeshua I will have the opportunity to fulfill my mission in life. I thank you for doing something so rare and so beautiful, expressing appreciation while I'm still alive to hear it. Thank you so much.